Hello and welcome to Breakfast All Day. Uh, Matt Ashley here with Christy Lemire, Alonzo Duraldi. Uh, today, very special day, one of my favorites. Um, we get to talk about an Adam Sandler movie. <laughs> Hubie this Halloween. Was your idea. This was your was my idea. idea. Let us be on record <laughs> as saying that there are many, many shitty Adam Sandler movies on Netflix, and we don't review all of them because truly life is too short. However, yeah. you suggested to us we should review Hubie Halloween. We we totally should, and and I stand by my terrible idea. <laughs> I'm very proud of my terrible idea, and in fact. Alonzo will tell us uh, about this movie because he yes. loved it so. It was a terrible idea. Uh, <laughs> all right, so it's set in Salem, Massachusetts. Uh, Adam Sandler plays Hubie, a grown man who continues to be the uh, the target of bullies and mean people in town, even though he just wants to keep people safe and make sure they have a fun time. Uh, for some unknown reason, the most popular girl in his high school class has carried a torch for him all this time, but he's too dense to understand that until the end of the movie. Uh, the actual plot uh, revolves around a couple of escapees from a mental institution and people who start going missing during the Halloween festivities and um yeah it's one of those adam sandler movies where he just gives his friends a bunch of jobs and um it's agony to sit through did you laugh at all i don't think so okay i don't think i laughed a single time uh wow. it, it is i would put this down there with grown-ups too which was worse because that was a movie that tried to pretend that it was about bullying while engaging in bullying. And this one's about bullying while giving you a character who is so beyond actually existing in a real way that the whole thing doesn't make any sense. But he, and yet he is very much cut from the same cloth as so many of these Adam Sandler comedy characters who are like overgrown man child characters who we're supposed to think are adorable. With a goofy it's, voice and it, it, it's, just, like this the whole time. it's the kind of character that like Jerry Lewis would play where he was like an eight year old boy in a man's body. And we were supposed to feel sad for him because everyone's so mean to the little boy. And it's just, uh, it, uh, so this is the water boy too, almost. I, yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, <sighs> There's, I found myself laughing at a lot of places in this, um, I, more so than I really expected. Like, so early on in the movie, we see like as Hubie rides his bike around, people throw shit at him, right? Um, and they stick with that joke and it gets progressively over, like it gets progressively crazier um, and kind of becomes metatextual about what else are they gonna throw? And it, kind of gets funny and there's there's moments in this that actually there's some funny shit going on and i kind of liked it um but you're right like alonzo when you say like there's no reason that julie bowen's character uh valerie valentine um, um something valentine violet yeah. violet violet, violet. There's she's no a purple reason. heart she's literally a purple heart yeah there's <laughs> there's zero reason for her to be interested in the way uh, in Hubie at all, even though they try and say like, well, it's cause he's kind and he's so nice. And like, right, this would That's, be- It's like an incel made this movie. Yeah, like it would almost be more palatable- Even if, Brill actually directed it, go ahead. <laughs> it, it, it would be more palatable if he wasn't doing the voice and he was just some kind of like, this is a thing that he does. Right, but the voice I think actually really takes away from what's going on here. But there's some like silly throwaway stuff, like this the Steve Buscemi stuff. You know, Buscemi sells it like Ray Liotta, clearly just goofing around, and I'm okay with that. Like, there's a lot of people in this that seeing them just kind of screw around on film, I, I was kind of okay with that. And there's some funny stuff going on um, when it's trying to like do the classic stupid gross out happy madison stuff that's where i think it starts to get weak and then the whole lesson that we learned feels like this kind of diatribe against the critical lambasting that sandler has gotten his whole career 
Like you I think couldn't help it. Text here. You think there's actual subtext here? Wow. Well, I didn't think it was. No, no, I thought it was text. <laughs> Well, all of these movies have that, right? All these movies yeah, have but a this one was... really mean-spirited and gross, but then we all need to be nice to each other at the end. No, but this was the one where it's like, you guys all pick on him, and he's just nice, and he just wants to make people happy, and, like, you guys are so mean. And, like, and I thought, and this is this is a thing he's been waiting to say to people like us. For but that's, that's a bullshit argument. I'm sorry. Sandler knows the difference between when he's making a movie like Uncut Gems or a movie like uh, Punch Drunk Love and when he's making I know any fucking Dennis Dugan, Stephen Brill, you know, whatever these uh, ass clown movies are. And so I don't buy it that it's our fault. Also, he makes a no, shit I, ton of money making these movies. I, so if he has to weather some bad reviews, boo fucking who? I didn't, well, also, I didn't say I he, agree. <laughs> also, remember... I'm not mad he, at you. I'm mad at him. He Remember when Uncut Gems came out and there was all this Oscar talk for Adam Sandler, and justifiably mm. so, he did yes. not get nominated. But he said, if you don't nominate me for an Oscar, I'm going to keep making these shitty movies. Like, he's totally aware of what they are and what their role is in pop culture. Uh, his entire role in <laughs> Funny People was playing a yeah. once-promising comedian who now makes shitty family comedies. And then that movie didn't do well, and he continued making shitty family comedies. He knows exactly what he's doing. Having said that, Matt makes a good point, which is like they're all having a good time. And because, like, it's, I mean, we're going to talk about the war with Grandpa next, which is <laughs> terrible and a massive waste of talent. Better than but this, though. No, it's not, oh, no, it's yes, not. It is. Oh, no, 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 I, no, I no, 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 more at no. This. Oh, no, I no, laughed, no, no. I laughed exactly one time at the war with Grandpa. I laughed a few times at this. Maybe part of it was I was sitting on that couch right there watching it with Nick and he was eating popcorn and it was a fun movie to watch with my kid because it is for kids in a lot of ways. The, the bit that Matt's talking you know, about with the, where he's riding his bike through town, not only are they throwing increasingly insane shit at him, but the running bit is like he's so accustomed to it and so ready for it that he knows like which way to lean like backward or forward right. to avoid getting swiped by like a file cabinet or whatever it is that they're throwing at him. So that's kind of funny. Um, the voice he's doing is like that traditional stupid Adam Sandler voice that he sometimes does. Right. I, I, but Nick I goes think to that's me, a like, terrible why? decision. I yeah. agree. And Nick goes to me, why is he talking in that voice? I'm like, I don't know. But it further infantilizes him. He could have just been like, a stunted but nice guy in that dead voice that he's done for so long. He doesn't even have to be stunted, right? Like, you could do this where instead of him just doing the voice, like, he's just this guy and that's what he does, right? And, like, you know, somewhat similar to, like, he gets close to that in um, Deeds, right? Mm -hmm. Mr. The, Deeds. Yeah, like, like, Deeds is, for the most part, just this decent guy, right? And And, like, he gets a little crazy sometimes, but for the most part, he's, like, you know, he's, I do. I do love that Keenan Thompson was like, "You are not putting me in a wig. You are not giving <laughs> me a dumb voice. You are not giving me like a face mole or whatever it is you do to people in these movies. I'm just going to show up and read my lines, and I'm going." But he had one of the best bits in the whole movie. The whole running bit with all the crazy reasons that Adam Sandler's character storms into the police chief's office. That, that thirty that seconds work. was sort of amusing. Um, the whole bit with with Maya Rudolph and Tim Meadows, I enjoyed. That was kind of funny. There are enough Maya Rudolph. Bits along the way, the the running bit with like the totally inappropriate shirts that June Squibb is wearing cracked me up because she's so innocent; she has no idea like what raunchy's double entendre is on the shirt. Right. What, what is like, muff, was like muff diving club or something? Yeah, muff's like. diving club. Yeah, <laughs> I um, laughed enough that like this was not as insufferable to me as the vast majority of these happy Madison movies. I, I do want to bring one thing up though. Like they get some, they get a decent joke sort of out of the three newscasters all wearing the Harley Quinn outfits. That's kind of right? a funny idea. One of whom is Adam Sandler's wife, by the way. But yeah. then <laughs> we have a Netflix movie that puts a young girl in I... an overly sexualized I thought about Harley that. Quinn costume. Where, and where is the, where is the fucking outrage? Yeah. Good point. Yep. Why is Texas not investigating this movie? Indeed. Uh -huh. I will say also, they show a remarkable amount of restraint in that this is not the usual Adam Sandler rounding up all his friends and going on vacation to make a movie kind of movie. Like 
Jack and Jill, where they go on a cruise, well, or the one with Jennifer Aniston where they go to Hawaii. Right, but I mean, like, <laughs> the grown-ups movies don't necessarily go anywhere either. Sometimes he just feels like being lazy at home. And, or, the, or, like, at a cabin, you know. Yeah. They, they make s'mores. Um, I, I didn't hate this one nearly as much. It is a total waste. Again, they have to do all the stupid fart and piss jokes I wish they didn't. I don't know why after all these decades of doing it, they still feel like they need to go to that card. It's like my number would be higher than it is if they didn't keep doing that. I that. have to watch a movie where Steve Buscemi's scene partner is Rob Schneider. Why? Did you get yeah, that maybe why? they're partners? Uh, yes, there's like I a, did. There's like a physical yes. affection yep. with them that's like yep. romantic maybe. I actually, <laughs> I actually thought that that brought Schneider up to like, oh, right, he can be... He can be okay. Steve Buscemi like, elevates all of our game. Yeah. No, no. Like, there's moments in this, a couple more passes at the script and a different director, you'd actually have a really good movie here, right? Whereas there are, don't give me that look, Alonzo. There are <laughs> Adam Sandler movies that are absolutely unsavable, right? Totally. This is... Name one. What's the worst one? What was, what was the... That's my boy. That's a bad right, one. That, Jack Grown and Ups Joe. 2 was really bad. What was the one with the Native American? Oh, the yeah. the, the Ridiculous Six. Yeah, that right? Was, that was terrible. I wasn't even counting the Netflix ones because that's a whole other level of shit. Like, well, this, this, is from that. The, this is from the director of The Do-Over, you know? Remember that yeah. one? <laughs> well, that was a Jennifer Aniston one in Hawaii, no, right? No, 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 no. The Do-Over is the one with <laughs> David Spade. Uh, where oh. they where they pretend to be dead or something. Just go with it is the Jennifer Aniston <laughs> one where Dave this Matthews is better than just go with it with his butt. This is better than just go with it. This is better than the one that they is that the one where they go to Africa? No, that's blended. This is better than blended. <laughs> We've seen them all at this point. <sighs> it's right. hard to weigh them. I think this time. is is this is this is at least as good as Big Daddy. This is a better is, job of, of balancing like the obnoxiousness with, with the supposed sweetness, I will say. Well, and, and there's like as some jarring as usual. Right. And there's some other stuff going on. Right. Like there's some other fun stuff. Um, I mean, it's 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 not great. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to take a bullet for this, but it's not as bad as you think, Alonzo. And you are totally wrong that you think that this is worse no, nope, it was worse than the war with no, no, grandpa. No. I'm, oh, no, no. I'm going to no, die no, no. on the that fake, hill. No, no, no. <laughs> we'll you must have that. gotten high on the fake Christmas. <laughs> with For those of you who are listening to this and not watching it, I wish you could see Alonzo's face. He just looks so disgusted. He looks this dead movie, inside. This movie made me angry. Like, that's the thing. When people talk about how, like, you know, the, the film critics don't care about movies. No, no, no. We care too much. Because I'll tell you, a great movie can lift my spirits for days. And a shitty movie like this, well, just makes me furious. And this movie made me furious. Well, what's your number? I said a four, which seems generous somehow. You but you I'm, said a 3.5. Oh, 3.5. Even that seems generous. But I'll go with 3.5. Okay, Matt. Five and a half. Yeah. <laughs> I said five, and part of that was I just had a good time watching it with my kid. So we're not that <laughs> far apart. Maybe I'm maybe I'm a zero. I don't know what the hell. It was junk. How do you quantify these kinds of feelings <sighs> about an Adam Sandler movie? And I think part of it, too, is like, and I know what you're going to say in response, Alonzo, but part of it is like I have retroactive better feelings about Adam Sandler because he makes good choices. Having said that, of course, because he does make good choices, <laughs> why does he keep making movies like this? That's the thing. Maybe I, he just enjoys it. Maybe it's just fun. Part of what I enjoy about a good Adam Sandler movie is the reminder that he's capable of much more stuff than the the what he's buttered his bread with. But then when I have to watch him do the buttering, it's like, oh, God, these are so terrible. They're always so terrible. And this one is no exception. It is an exception. You're wrong. Which voice is that? What character is that? Is I don't that, even know. Is that, is that little Nikki? Is that the voice? <laughs> it's just like the, it's the dumb voice he does and all the time. It, instead of the canteen in this movie, we get the thermos. There's a thermos. It's like a Swiss army knife. Yeah. I thought that was kind of funny. That's that is. I the wish they would have done more movie, with that. That's the closest this movie comes to like a fun, like just from nowhere running gag. But it's just so at the service of this rest of this nothing that it doesn't have anywhere to go. Our numbers are four point seven. 
Again, if you're going to watch an Adam Sandler movie on Netflix, you're going to watch an Adam Sandler movie on Netflix, regardless of what we say. Indeed. So if you guys enjoy, if you had a smile in these troubling times, <laughs> if Hubie Halloween put a smile on your face, then good for you. Hooray. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us at Be Fast All Day on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook, and check out our Patreon page at patreon.com slash day. We are getting close to the end of seasons one of uh, The Vow and Lovecraft Country. I guess The Vow is only going to be one season, but you never know. Uh, so yeah, check that out, patreon.com slash day. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.